Okay guys, so let's talk about glucoregulation. That's the regulation of glucose in your body. Now it's controlled by two key hormones, insulin and glucagon. What do they do? Where are they produced? And why do we need them? Let's get into today's lesson. Now I'm honestly excited to do today's video with you because I'm gonna take a fairly tricky process and make it really simple for you. So stay with me because I'm gonna cover everything you need to know for AQA, A-level biology. So we'll kick off with some key terms. Insulin is a hormone released when blood glucose levels are high. Glucagon is a hormone released in response to low blood glucose. Glycogen is a polysaccharide store of glucose in animals. Remember, it's made up of alpha glucose. I've got a video on carbohydrates if you need to learn more about that. Glycogenolysis. Lysis means to split. We're splitting glycogen to glucose. And I'm going to show you a diagram that will make that really clear to you a bit later. Glycogenesis is glucose to glycogen. So we're forming a polysaccharide from glucose. Now think about the first chapter in the Bible, Genesis. That's creation when God created the world, if you like, if that's what you believe in. Um, so glycogenesis is making glycogen from glucose. Gluconeogenesis, neo means new. So it's making glucose in a new way. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new, genesis meaning create. So glycerol and amino acids become glucose. Now fatty acids can also become glucose too. Remember, all of those biological molecules, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids, they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So you can make glucose from glycerol and amino acids. The islets of Langerhans, that's a region of the pancreas made up of alpha and beta cells that secretes insulin and glucagon. The alpha cells detect a fall in blood glucose and secrete glucagon. I always tell my students that A in alpha for the A in glucagon. So AA, alpha cells, glucagon. Beta cells detect an increase in blood glucose and secrete insulin. Adrenaline is secreted by the adrenal glands and it makes glucose available for the fight or flight response. Now, what is the role of insulin? Well, insulin is secreted by the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans, and it's released when the beta cells detect a high blood glucose concentration. Insulin binds to receptors on muscles and liver cells, and it increases the membrane permeability to glucose. And it does this by adding channel proteins, and this will increase the rate of glucose uptake, because remember, Glucose needs to be taken up through facilitated diffusion because it's too large to get across the phospholipids. I've got a video on the phospholipid bilayer if you want to know more about that. Now, number five, insulin stimulates glycogenesis by activating enzymes. So that glucose that's been taken up from the blood can become glycogen. More glycogen will be therefore stored. And finally, insulin increases the rate of respiration in your muscle cells. So what is the role of glucagon next of all? Well, glucagon is secreted by alpha cells in the islets of Langerhans. Remember, glucagon has got an A in it, and so does alpha cells. It is released when alpha cells detect a low blood glucose concentration. Glucagon binds to receptors on liver cells, and glucagon stimulates glycogenolysis, which is the conversion of glycogen to glucose, and it also stimulates the conversion of glycerol fatty acids and amino acids into glucose via gluconeogenesis. And it does this by activating enzymes. Finally, glucagon decreases the rate of respiration and therefore the breakdown of glucose. So we need to learn the G words next of all, because they can be quite confusing. So as promised, here's the diagram to help you do that. So we start off with glycogen or storage polysaccharide. Now, if glycogen is converted to glucose, we call that glycogenolysis, so splitting of glycogen. Think to hydrolysis, splitting with water. Glycogenic lysis is splitting glycogen. Now, if we go from glucose to glycogen, so the opposite, that's going to be glycogenesis, forming glycogen. Glucose can be made from amino acids and glycerol, and this process is called gluconeogenesis making glucose in a new way. Remember, glucagon activates glycogenolysis 
and gluconeogenesis. So we've got more glucose in the blood. Insulin activates glycogenesis, decreasing blood glucose. So I would highly recommend drawing this diagram because it'd be really beneficial to you to understand those G words. So controlling blood glucose for your negative feedback. Well, first of all, the pancreas releases insulin and beta cells secrete insulin, which binds to liver and muscle cell receptors. Next, in response to insulin, target cells take up glucose and the liver converts glucose to glycogen. This is known as glycogenesis and we also have increased respiration. Next, blood glucose levels fall and blood glucose should be around 90 to 110 milligrams per deciliter. The pancreas will release glucagon if glucose levels fall and alpha cells are the ones which release glucagon and they will bind to liver cell receptors only. So there's a difference there. Insulin binds to receptors on the liver and muscles, whereas glucagon only binds to receptors on liver cells. Next, in response to glucagon, the liver breaks down glycogen and releases glucose into the blood. And this is gonna have glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. So we've got more glucose available because remember, this is all in response to blood glucose levels dropping. So. How does insulin increase cellular glucose uptake? Well, first of all, muscle cells, they have a channel protein that transports glucose. And this channel protein is known as glucose transporter 4, or you can abbreviate it to GLUT4. When insulin binds, vesicles containing GLUT4 fuse with the phospholipid bilayer, allowing glucose transport by facilitated diffusion. Now, here's a diagram showing that. So we have insulin binding to the insulin receptor, and then we'll have glucose going through GLUT4 into the cells, lowering the blood glucose. And that's going to allow us to produce glycogen via the process of glycogenesis. So how does adrenaline increase blood glucose concentration? Well, adrenaline is important in the fight or flight response to protect us from danger. So adrenaline binds to liver cell receptors. It causes glycogenolysis, so the splitting of glycogen, and it inhibits glycogenesis, so it stops the formation of glycogen. Adrenaline stimulates the secretion of glucagon, and more glucose is now available for cellular respiration in the fight or flight response. More glucose, more respiration, more respiration, more ATP, more ATP, faster muscle contractions, and, and all that good stuff. So the second messenger model next of all, now this can take place with adrenaline or glucagon. So the first step is that adrenaline binds to the receptor, changing its shape. And we can see we've got our receptor here. So this is our receptor molecule at the top. Now that's going to activate an enzyme and that enzyme is known as adenyl cyclase. So we've got adenyl cyclase here. So we've changed the shape of it, activating it. Now adenyl cyclase is going to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Now ATP stands for adenine triphosphate or adenosine triphosphate, whereas CAMP stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate, adenine monophosphate. So it's only got one phosphate. So cyclic AMP is our second messenger. So that's why this is called the second messenger model, because the first messenger, I guess, is your hormone. But well, that's not actually going to enter the cell. So the second messenger is the enzyme that's been activated within the cell. Now, protein kinase catalyzes glycogenolysis. And remember, glycogenolysis, so we've got protein kinase, and we call this a cascade of enzyme reactions. And glycogenolysis is the splitting of glycogen into glucose. And more glucose will now be available for respiration. So that's a molecular look at how adrenaline frees up glucose. So type 1 diabetes, next of all. AQA, A-level biology, is keen on you knowing this, and it comes up in the exam quite frequently. So in type 1 diabetes, beta cells are actually attacked by the immune system. No insulin can therefore be produced because beta cells in the islets of Langerhans are what produce insulin. Now, after digestion, blood glucose levels are going to remain elevated leading to hyperglycemia. And remember, hyperglycemia, hyper means higher. So we've got more blood glucose. 
Now, excess glucose passes through the nephron of the kidney without being reabsorbed. So that's one of the ways we can detect diabetes is glucose in a patient's urine. And exogenous, meaning insulin from outside of the body, exo meaning outside, is required. And that'll typically be administered with an insulin pump or through injections. And hypoglycemia, that's low blood glucose, can result if too much insulin is injected at one point. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, risk factors here include obesity, poor diet, a lack of exercise, family history and age. It's often seen as preventable and it's where beta cells can't produce enough insulin. But the key difference between type 1 and type 2 is with type 2 they still produce some insulin. Or additionally, insulin resistance can develop and insulin receptors on cells are no longer sensitive to insulin binding. Now this can be treated with exercise, fat loss, or eating a clean diet. And in severe cases, exogenous insulin, so insulin from outside of the body, may need to be administered. Type two diabetes is a lifestyle disease, and it's becoming more of a problem in developed countries where things like obesity and a sedentary lifestyle is more common. So let's go through some exam practice next of all. Question one, describe glucagon's role in gluconeogenesis. So we've got glucagon's role and we've got gluconeogenesis. And the other important thing to note is that it's a described question and it's two marks. So we're going to be thinking about two points we need to make. So our first point is that it binds to receptors and activates enzymes. And we saw this in the secondary messenger model earlier. The second mark is for saying that glycerol, amino acids, and fatty acids are converted into glucose. And that's AQA testing whether you know what gluconeogenesis actually means. Question two, explain how the inhibition, so inhibition means to stop, okay, or slow down, so inhibition of adenylate cyclase, which is also known as adenyl cyclase, okay, so that's an enzyme in the secondary messenger model, can reduce the concentration of blood glucose. One mark for saying ATP is not converted to cyclic AMP, because remember, adenyl cyclase is the second messenger that catalyzes the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP. Second mark for saying this means that less protein kinase is activated. And a third and final mark for saying, therefore, glycogenolysis, which is the conversion of glycogen to glucose, does not take place. Next question then, explain how the binding of insulin increases the rate of respiration. So this is an explain question. So we need to give reasons how, because explain means to give reasons. And we're talking about the binding of insulin, so we might be talking about receptors here. So how does that increase the rate of respiration? Well, our first mark is for saying that insulin increases the number of glucose channel proteins, which are also called GLUT4, as we mentioned earlier. Our second mark is for saying, therefore, more glucose can enter the cell. And that's going to mean more glycolysis or respiration, because if we've got more glucose, we've got more glycolysis. Question four, give two reasons why patients with type two diabetes do not receive pancreas transplants. This is a really tricky question, and I've included this because I like you to encounter give questions to see the difference. So number one, Type 2 patients still produce insulin. And secondly, patients with type 2 diabetes have receptors that are less sensitive. We can get a final mark for saying type 2 diabetes is controlled by diet and exercise. So a transplant isn't necessarily needed if it can be controlled with diet and exercise. So that's everything for today, guys. Please like, comment and subscribe if you got some value from this video. And I will see you in the next one.